Day 144 notes, Advanced Algebra 2. Today we're going to look at the applications of solving right triangles. So these are all going to be word problems. Now it's important to be able to draw accurate diagrams um, that follow each of these descriptions. They don't have to be perfectly drawn, but they do need to be accurate. I'll show you what I mean. In this case, number 53, a man is lying on the beach flying a kite. He holds the end of the kite string at level ground, or at ground level, and estimates the angle of elevation of the kite to be 50 degrees. So I'm going to assume that uh, this dot here on my page is the man uh, lying on the beach, and the angle of elevation must be 50 degrees. So remember, angle of elevation means that it's an angle measured off of a horizontal. So that would be facing upward like this and 50 degrees. Now we're told that the string is 450 feet long, so this point here would represent the kite itself. Now if I brought a straight line down from, to, from the kite to the ground, that would form a 90 degree angle at the bottom. The question in this word problem asks us to find how high is the kite above the ground. And now what we have is a right triangle with an opposite side and a hypotenuse. And we can use our techniques learned from last week and this week to solve for x. I'm not actually going to solve for x here because this is a problem that might show up on your quiz this week. So I'll trust that you can solve for x on your own. Let's take a look at another example. This time, an airplane is flying at an elevation of 5,150 feet. So right off the bat, I'm going to put a dot on my page and come down from that dot to level ground. This represents the height of the airplane, 5,150 feet. So the ground is going to be perpendicular to that line. Two motorists are driving cars on the highway on opposite sides of the plane. So this means that one motorist is here on the left side of the airplane, and one can be over here on the right side of the airplane. The angle of depression to one car is 35 degrees and the other is 52 degrees. So when we're talking about angle of depression, remember that's also a measurement off of horizontal, but it's a downward measurement. So what we're saying is that the angle to one of our cars is um, 35 degrees, angling downward and to the other it's going to be 52 degrees. Now what, what we're being asked to find is how far apart the cars are. We have one car here and one car here. We need this total distance between the two. And right now we don't have a very good diagram that would tell us that. But if you notice, we could solve for two lengths and add them together. For example, if we solve for x in this triangle and perhaps y in this triangle, we can add x and y together and that would represent the distance between the cars. And we still don't quite have enough information to solve for x and y just yet, but we can easily obtain enough information for that based on the degrees that we've just indicated in the diagram here. You have to remember that when two lines are parallel to one another, this line and this line, for example, are parallel to one another, then alternate interior angles are also equal to one another. So if this angle of depression is 35 degrees, then the angle of elevation relative to the car is also 35 degrees. And if the angle of, of depression relative to the airplane is 52 here, then the angle of elevation relative to the car is 52 degrees here. Now we can use our techniques to solve for both x and y. We have an opposite side and an adjacent in this triangle. We have an opposite side and an adjacent side in this triangle. You can use an appropriate technique to solve for both x and y at this point. Again, I will not complete this calculation for you here since this is one of the questions that might show up on your quiz this week. Let's take a look at another example. 
To measure the height of the cloud cover at an airport, a worker shines a spotlight upward at an angle of 75 degrees from the horizontal. An observer 600 meters away measures the angle of elevation to the spot of the light to be 45 degrees. Find the height of the cloud cover. Now the solution to this problem involves a little bit more algebra, so I'll try to walk you through a little bit more of this problem. Um, we have a 75 degree angle of elevation here in the bottom right hand corner and this observer 600 meters away is looking up at 45 degrees and we're trying to identify this spot, this spot up here where the spotlight reaches the cloud cover. The problem that we're facing is that the only additional piece of measurement that we have is that 600 meters is the total distance from one corner to the other. What would be really nice to have is if we had measurements x and y that told us these distances within each right triangle. But we don't have that. However, you might notice that in this triangle on the left hand side that it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And if these two angles are both 45 degrees, then that means that each side length here is equal to h. In a similar fashion, we can discover that this angle measure up here is 15 degrees because 75 plus 15 plus 90 would equal 180. By leaving this value down here, indicate it with an x, we can actually set up a, a relatively simple calculation to identify that side length. That side length x is equal to the total distance, 600 meters, minus this distance, h. Again, the total length, 600 meters, minus this partial distance, h, is equal to this distance, x. And I'll show you why that's important now. If we turn our attention back to this triangle here on the right hand side, we can set up an appropriate trigonometry calculation to identify the height h in terms of x. And if we replace the letter x with its distance in terms of h, then we'll, then we'll have an equation for which we can calculate h. Let me show you what I mean. Based on this angle measure up here, tangent of 15 degrees over 1 must be equal to x divided by h, opposite over adjacent. Now by making a substitution for x, x is equal to 600 minus h, so this x can be substituted with 600 minus h. I will then rewrite this formula, tangent of 15 degrees over 1 must be equal to 600 minus h divided by h. And at first that might not seem very helpful, but I will remind you that tangent of 15 degrees then would be equal to 600 divided by h minus h divided by h. We can separate this fraction, this single fraction, into two fractions by using our rules from algebra. And we should recognize what h over h is equal to. Tangent of 15 degrees over 1 is equal to 600 over h minus 1. At this point, I don't think I need this uh, fraction uh, tangent 15 over 1 anymore. I'll just leave that as tangent of 15 degrees because I'm no longer dealing with proportions. I have a fraction minus a whole number. So uh, the idea of cross multiplying and dividing um, kind of goes away at this point. But remember, our ultimate goal is to solve for h. We would like to get h by itself. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to move this negative 1 and this positive 600. And the first one that we should move is this positive 1. I'll add that to both sides of the equation. Tangent of 15 degrees must be equal to 600 divided by h. And now we're back to a single fraction, so I can return, whoops, this should be plus 1 here. Now we're back to a single fraction. I could rewrite this side of the equation as a fraction over 1 if I wanted to, and then cross multiply and divide in order to isolate h. 
So h would be equal to 600 times 1 divided by tangent of 15 plus 1. Let's see what we get. 600 over tangent of 15 plus 1. Notice how I type that into the calculator. It's exactly the same as it was written on my page. Now before I press enter, I do want to make sure that I'm operating in degrees, which I am. So now I'll press enter and see what we get. Well, that's an answer that's probably not real helpful to us. So let me press control and enter and see what we get there. Uh, that height value is equal to 473.2 feet. There's some interesting mathematical steps that went on in this problem to solve it. So please make sure that you study that. Pay close attention to the methods that we used because you will be asked to recreate these methods on the quiz this week. Your problem might be, or I'm sorry, one of your word problems might be this exact example. So it is uh, in your best interest to investigate this and verify your understanding. I'll go ahead and stop the video here. What I would suggest that you do is read problem number 62 and make sure that you're comfortable with, with its description. We'll talk about it in class on Thursday. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to help.